Now, once we have given the short pulse, what was the scenario? Reverse bias is reduced, and we know that as the reverse bias is reduced, what is happening? The depletion width, the depletion width of the electrons that are captured in traps, and the capacitance suddenly rises due to decrease in the depletion width. So, as the reverse bias is reduced, the depletion width is reduced, and the capacitance has increased. And because of this, the electrons are trying to actually what they are actually trying to recombine with the holes. Now, after that, the beginning of the transient state. When the reverse bias is restored, the capacitance drops to the again the minimum value. Obviously, again the reverse bias is restored. We know that as the reverse bias is restored, what will be happening? The junction capacitance will be reducing to its minimum value. And as because of what the electrons that were actually trying to come back are trapped where the traps are available. So now the last step in the decay transient due to the thermal emission of the trapped electrons now can be verified. So when the reverse bias is reduced to zero for a very short time period, what happens is electrons will flow into it where the previously depletion region was there, and this level in volume will capture the electron. So what is happening? You can see that the, when the depletion with this reducing the electrons are moving along with it. Okay, but as soon as you are removing that pulse, what is happening? It is coming back to its own position. But meanwhile, the electrons when it is trying to return with this depletion region, what is happening? It is getting filled up into the trap, and there where we are getting the trap. So d and t upon d t is equal to c of n capital N of t minus n of t. Okay, in that what it stands for? Capital N of t stands for the total density of the deep level states. Small n t uh, is standing for density of the field traps and C n capture time constant of the electron. So you can see that for a given p n junction, width of the depletion region can be given as width w under root of two epsilon that is permittivity upon q into bracket one upon n d star. Into bracket v zero plus v r. Okay. In this, n d star is standing for n d minus n t. Now, as n t varies with the time, so the c d. Now, why it is varying with time with respect to that? Because it is with respect to the junction. So c t is equal to c zero into bracket one minus n t upon twice n d e s to minus t by eta, where eta is nothing but one upon e of n. So the emission rate of the trap concentration can be determined from the change in the capacitance of the pin injection dark. So ultimately we have detected the trap, but which thing we have utilized the junction capacitance of the pn junction dark. Okay, so this is what the DLTS is all about. Now the next topic that we are going to start is ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. So what is actually UV spectroscopy standing for? A method that measures the energy gap between the material by measuring the absorption spectrum. So, whatever the band gap is there, so we are utilizing how much of the energy it is absorbing. On that basis, we will be equating this value of the band gap. So, a UV spectrometer is an instrument that is used in this method. That is the methodology, and this is the device that will be utilizing. So, what is the experimental setup? Let us see. So first we are saying that two lamps are there, okay, and that two lamps are actually inserted in the mirror. Now the thing is that they are actually uh, concentrating on the mirror because see the light is provided by this constant lamp will be in only direction. Basically your mirror is actually concentrating them and getting on a monochromator. What is doing that monochromator? Monochromator is getting you into a single beam out of it. Meanwhile you are also got the filter for filtering your light source. Okay. After that beam, beam is given to the equal beam splitter. Okay. So instead of one beam, we will be getting the two beam now. So it is getting into the beam splitter. One is given to the sample, another is given to the reference. Okay. And at the end of that, you have got the photo diode. Okay. So equal beam is splitted, and after splitting, it is injected on the or it is concentrated on the two thing. That is one is our reference and the other is our sample. And end we have got the photo diode where the data processing is done and we are getting the actual data. But how this is functioning actually? So let us understand the intensity of the light from the sample I and that from the reference I0 would be different. Okay. So how it is different? That for example, you can see in the diagram 
that you have actually saw that when the light is coming so if we are having a reference a definite amount of the light is going through it okay and photodiode is detecting that is our for example reference now according to the sample's concentration the light will be absorbed or it will be allowed to flow through it the more it allowed to flow through it the more the photodiode will be absorbing okay so the ratio of the incident intensities is called as the transmitters and t is equal to i that is actually absorbed after the sample and i0 is our reference so here the transmitters will be dependent on the concentration of the sample how we can also get a relation with the transmitters and the concentration on this graph so it is but obvious the more the concentration the less it would be allowed to transmit through okay so the more the dense the material is the light would be penetrating through it comparatively less so transmitter shows an exponential decrease with the increase in the concentration that we are supposed to take away okay so now after that the expression of the characteristics of an exponential relation becomes difficult so to rectify this problem another quantity that is taken in absorbance but when we are taking this as absorbance it is nothing but in the term of transmittance only so absorbance is equal to inverse of ln of t which can be also written as we are replacing the value of t what is the t value it is a is equal to minus ln i by i 0 Okay, so absorbance is the logarithm of the reciprocal of the transmitters. That is what is to be taken. So we have got two terms: the transmitters and the absorbance. Now, the torque relation is used to determine the band gap. Now, see, thing is that we have got through the absorbance, we have got through the transmitters. Then, what is this torque relation? So, torque relation will get you alpha H V is equal to H V minus E G raised to n. That A alpha is the absorption coefficient that we will get from the actually transmitters and the absorbers. E G is the band gap of the semiconductor. H V is the photon energy and N is the nature of the transition. So from here we are getting that E G is our band gap that is to be determined, and from the transmitters and absorbers we are getting the absorption coefficient. Now how it is done? So so the relation between the transmitters and the absorption coefficient is given as alpha is equal to L N of one by T. upon x where we know that x is the thickness of the sample that is also much important rather than the concentration and t stands for our transmittances so by obtaining the transmittances of the setup using the tox relation will be getting the band gap of the semiconductor okay so now basically and this realizing all the things that is u is spectroscopy what first we have got the transmittances on the basis of the transmittances what we got we got absorbance and absorbance that is again the relation of the transmitters is was true after that in the tox equation we have got alpha that is the coefficient absorption coefficient again we have got some relation between absorption coefficient and absorbance okay and from that we are getting the bandwidth of any material so hope you guys have understood this very well